Welcome to California in the Riverside International Raceway, here for part six of my 1966 racing season. I'm here for the Motor Trend 500, which was a NASCAR Grand National race held in January every year out here. And if you were with me last time, we were in New Zealand racing some Formula cars for the Tasman series. So you might be wondering how am I in California now, but got a call from Dan Gurney there right after the race in the second place finish at the Wigram Airfield saying there was an open car with the Wood Brothers here at Riverside if I could get here in time. And so Richie hopped right on a plane and flew over. So I'll be racing the number 12 uh, Ford Galaxy, 1966 Ford Galaxy for the Wood Brothers. It's the backup car for Marvin Panch's normal 21 that everybody's familiar with. Dan Gurney as well racing for the Wood Brothers in the 121 uh, car here. And so it should be a good race, but I have missed qualifying because of the travel. The Wigram race took place technically just the day before, but with the time difference, it's really like two days or one and a half days. But I wasn't able to get here in time for qualifying. So Richie Ginther was able to take the car out to qualify, uh, but I'll have to start at the back of the pack because I was in the driver qualifying. So I've got to work my way from the very back of the pack to try to get to the front and impress Dan Gurney uh, during this race. But it's a long race, we'll go through that in a second, so hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to get there in time. Riverside was the home to NASCAR in the 60s and before. Uh, I believe they started racing in the late 50s all the way through the 80s and um, was a great stop on the calendar. And Dan Gurney was the guy racing out here. He won something like five out of seven races through the 60s uh, driving for the Wood Brothers at this course. And he wasn't a NASCAR driver normally, but this was just his home track and where he was quick. And in 1966, that was no different. Dan Gurney won the race with just a couple other drivers leading some laps. I think Curtis Turner was the main opponent during the race, driving for the Wood Brothers as well. Uh, but Dan Gurney was just the man. So I'm coming out here in a Wood Brothers car. Hopefully we'll be able to impress Dan, but I have a feeling he's gonna be very, very quick today. So this race was called the Motor Trend 500 and the 500 stood for 500 miles, uh, like many of the numbers do. But if you think about it, this is 500 miles on a 2.7 mile road course, uh, which has an average speed. It's a fast road course, but has an average speed of about 100 miles an hour. So in real life, this race took over five hours to complete. So in keeping with the 30% distance I've been doing for all the races this season, that's gonna put this race at 56 laps. And I think it'll show you just how much of an endurance event NASCAR races really were. Uh, back in the day. But starting from the back, I think there's going to be plenty of action and we've got fuel and tire burn as well. So there'll be some pit stops. I think we'll take three pit stops. I think it'd be really close on two during the race, but we'll have to see how the strategy works out itself. But it'll be hopefully an interesting race here. So we'll take a look at the qualifying results and Dan Gurney was able to back up his real life results, starting on the pole in the 121 car from David Pearson in second. Then we have Don White and Jim Herdebees, the indie star there, starting on the second row, work our way down. A lot of famous names in the grid here, Richard Petty, James Hilton, but there's also quite a few lesser known names. The West Coast races back in the day were a mix of NASCAR Grand National drivers and West Coast stock car drivers. So you have some locals mixed in, which makes for an interesting grid. And I'll add that this is not the fully realistic grid that raced the 1966 race. There's just not all of the paint schemes and, and cars available for everybody that really raced, but I was able to compile together, I think, the most important important or relevant drivers from the race, hopefully not leaving out, out anybody too major. We've got some one-off attempts from Mario Andretti and AJ Foyt here, although they're, they both don't look super competitive, uh, but then have obviously the locals and Dan Gurney, of course, to round out the field. So starting from the back, I'm gonna have a lot of cars to pass, but we'll be able to take some time to get through them. I'm hoping by the first stint, I can have passed some of the slower cars. And it's good to note that the cars, you can see it from the qualifying times, the cars further down the grid are quite a bit slower than the ones starting towards the front. And that was very common. There would only be a handful of cars that could win an average race. Mechanical attrition as well, I, I think we'll feature today. Uh, so we'll have to see if we can make it to the end, hopefully, and, uh, and get back up there. I'd love to finish in the top 10. 
So we'll take a look at the circuit, and this is the classic Riverside Raceway. It's got the S's and the elevation changes and the banked corners and everything that makes Riverside awesome. But it's important to note the version I've got here is a little bit different than it would have been in 1966, specifically at the straightaway in the last corner. Things would have been configured quite a bit differently, but this is such an awesome version of the circuit. I don't want to sacrifice any of that, and hopefully everybody can suspend their realism for a minute. And we're obviously in NASCAR 2003. I'll be racing the 1963 mod which has this great 66 car set that was painted up for it the cars don't look exactly like they would have uh, in real life but I think it gives a great impression and it's just fun to do races like this in context and, and know a little bit more about what's going on and seeing how well I can do so I think that's enough talking this is gonna be a pretty long race so why don't we get started with the 1966 Motor Trend 500 in these you know 15 to 20 car grids in the formula series 43 cars looks like a lot and I think the real race actually had 44 cars in it so so be an action-packed race I don't think there's gonna be a dull moment for quite a while in this one but I've got time 56 laps is quite a lot of laps around here so I can wait through it first stint is all about being careful I think we'll probably go maybe a lap 20 or so before pitting just gonna really look for everybody else to be pitting and uh, try to stay on sequence what looks competitive but we'll come through the ninth turn here and look out for that green flag to start the motor trend 500 start it down in first gear here the ford engine humming away green flag is out let's get it the second gear, a little bit of a kick from the rear tires, so we'll come to turn one, oh, car's going three wide in front of me, we'll just oh, gently get it on through, trying to get away from those guys, we'll come to the S's, everybody's going to stack up here, this is, this is really a one wide section, I don't know how everybody's getting through here, two and three wide, oh I see a car off way ahead, kick it dirt up, the first lap everybody a lot of these drivers would be excited though to be in a NASCAR race so come around turn six very easy to lose the car here now gas it up so we'll head to turn eight oh, I can see the whole field here all crunched together put it down a first gear and just hug the apex up the inside of the 38 car here. Now, throttle up for the back straightaway. Oh, the car gets a little lively there on the throttle. All right, third gear, top out in fourth gear here. Oh, and these two, I don't know if I want to try anything crazy on the first lap. We'll come through the venerable kink. Just keep our distance a little bit down to third gear for turn nine. Quite a high entry speed because the banking really feels like a reverse oval corner. But there we go, coming out of turn nine and completing the first lap. So one piece, I don't think I've hit anything just yet. But a lot of cars in front. And a long way to go. We'll just come over the top of the hill here. Very easy to run wide, hit that pit wall. Down a second gear for the start of the S's. Whoa, locking up the brakes a little bit. Car in front made a couple moves there, but we'll see. Maybe I can get around them. Snuck in behind the 47. Whoa, we got a car coming up the inside. 38 car there. Try to keep it nice and tidy here. Right on the curb. Just gentle with the throttle at the top of the hill. Down a first gear then.
27 is going to come up and block me. Just looking in the mirror almost as much as I'm looking forward. Oh, 38 is going to lunge up the inside. All right. So pretty racy here in the early laps. This should be much quicker than some of these guys once, once I can actually get into a groove here. Oh, car in front hitting the wall, 47. Just ran wide, I guess, through there. Take that position up the inside. It's gonna fight back a little bit. Just ran into the wall. Come break it down for the S's. You can see my skid mark from the lap before. Oh, 38's quite slow here. Getting checked up. This car's battling, weaving in front of me. Oh, onto the dirt. Turn six, just keep it nice and orderly. Using all the runoff there. Down a second, these two are gonna go side by side. I'll see if maybe I can kick it a little wide and have the better line down the straightaway. here into turn eight. Hardest corner on the circuit in my opinion, especially with the other layouts. This one still quite hard though. Car gets all kinds of squirrely on acceleration. Just not a lot of grip in these old tires. They'll come up the inside of the 18. One of the three in front, I think that's Mario and Andretti in the gray car there. So he's trying to make some moves pretty far down in the pack for Mario. in the 67 here. So we'll try to come up the inside maybe for turn nine. Whoa, on the brakes there, but car is coming down, cutting me off. So we'll complete another lap. Got a good run on Arrington. try to pass each other here coming into the S's. On a good lap, you can keep it in third there and just float through the corner, but with so many cars around, oh, and Arrington really slow. Come around him here. These two in front slowing each other down. Andretti was always an aggressive driver. Come down to second gear, try to float around the 89. Down to first, all over the curbs with Mario. side of Mario here coming into the turn eight. And such slow cornering speeds in these lumbering beasts, but makes them so challenging to drive. I don't know if you can tell how much the car is skating around once I get that throttle down, but the amount of horsepower compared to grip is just crazy. Oh, I'm making a few good passes on that lap, so I'm interested to see where I'm at now. little group in front of me as well. Hopefully can close 
in on them quickly and Tiny Lund, the next car up. So come through turn nine, complete another lap. So completing five laps of the race, start lap six here. Like I said, first stint I imagine, I'm not exactly sure, I think 18 laps is about as far as I can go. But tires as well, I've got it a little behind the curtain, got it on two times tire and fuel wear, just to make it a little more interesting with the strategy. So the group in front fighting with each other, slowing down quite a bit. So the S's are a bad place to pass. Everybody today doesn't seem to think so, but the increased tire wear means that tires, changing them, very useful. Allison directly in front of him in this white car. So some of the legends. Absolutely in their heyday here. Get onto the straightaway. I've got more speed than these two, but getting blocked in by Allison. Let's see if I can take this extreme outside lane through the kink. Bobby's gonna give me the space, thankfully. out of it. Come down a third gear, just roll it on through turn nine, trying to keep the speed up so they don't come back on me. So I was worried there for a second when I was fighting with the 38 car that I was going to be stuck back in the pack for this, but it seems like after I've gotten a couple laps, the car is definitely quick. I'm still just in 30th place now, so as I look up the grid, the cars will become faster and faster in front and it will not be so easy. Down a second gear then. Well, these two trying to sort things out amongst them. Three in front. Oh, what a crash. Oh, and that's Curtis Turner going wide. Everybody just trying to get through the incident. Luckily making it through. I don't know if there'll be a caution flag maybe. Go down a first gear for the hill here, turn six. Oh, so getting around, Curtis Turner there, getting spun out. That's actually one of my teammates as well. In the other car, which led some laps in the real race, but obviously things not going as well today for him. We'll just roll it on the inside. Next to JD McDuffie right now, I believe. There we go, getting on the straightaway. first gear around here. Track has a little bit of everything. I think that's why it's so awesome. Trying to come up the inside of the 16 then, turn eight. Oh, locking up the brakes just a little bit there. I can see the twitch of the car. line, but able to pass the nine car as well. All 
right. So I got a little bit of clear track now. We're definitely gonna hit lap traffic in this one, as long as it stays green, which we've been lucky for so far. Oh, missing the apex there in turn one. It's heart sinking, I thought I was going into the wall there, but luckily able to grip it up. Just down to third here for nosing it into the S's, also missing the apex there slightly, pick up the throttle. see my best lap so far is only 98 miles per hour and if you remember pole time I think 108 with Dan Gurney and Jim uh, David Pearson <laughs> Dan Gurney and David Pearson at the front there were mine getting all bundled up in the corner but a 108 is uh, quite a lot quicker than I'm going and I don't know if they're exactly doing that speed up there but they'll be going pretty quick for sure though just with starting at the very rear with all the slower traffic we'll come through turn nine oh maybe can sneak up the inside of the 87 oh, i'm not gonna be able to do it here we'll come out of the corner try to set them up for turn one or two there we go on the inside oh that would be quite daring oh and he's gonna basically park it on the apex oh, my god Saving the car though, I think I got a lock up in the left front. Definitely uh, the tires after this stint are gonna be ruined. Yeah, I've been able to squeeze around them there. All right, down a second. Oh, and I think I got Ned Jarrett in front of me in the 11 car. Now we're able to hustle the car a little bit, but still as easy as ever to spin out. a finesse with driving these older NASCARs. Just as heavy as ever. And they're very close to stock. Let's get all kinds of sideways there. You can judge by the interior alone. It's obviously still got some of the paneling in it and everything. It's definitely stock cars. Sell on Monday. Come down a third gear. Sharp end of that stone wall or concrete wall just staring at you as you enter turn nine. Closing in on Ned Jarrett nicely here. Just floating it through turn nine. Oh, got a lot of speed on him, but I'll let him take the corner here. <laughs> Last lap was a little too scary there. You can see my skid marks. Oh, and a slow car. John Sears, I believe, in the 04. Smoking. So some mechanical failures already. Oh, Ned quite slow there. Jump up the inside of him. So making it around Ned Jarrett. Up into, I think that would be P20, or I guess it passed John Sears too. We'll have to see next time around. Oh, I'm behind Bobby Isaac now. cut it on the exit. It's a very tight corner. We'll throttle on past Isaac. All right, so another productive lap. But already some mechanical failures from everybody else, so it's starting to happen. And I anticipate, I think something like half the field had some kind of issue during the real race, and that's Definitely how it was with a 500 miler around a road course back then. It was about testing the machines as much as the drivers. Come through turn 
one then. Got plenty of clear road here, so it looks like the end of the stint maybe is just going to be turning some nice laps, which will be good. 12 laps in, I got at least another three or four before pit stops. Just kind of keep my eyes on what everybody else is doing. And the gauge on my dash immediately to the right of the tachometer, that's the fuel pressure. And if that moves from where it's at right now with 17 or 18 PSI, it is time to come into the pits immediately. That basically means the fuel system is running low on pressure, aka there's no fuel left. No pit crews in these days to tell you. I think, honestly, you hear a lot of stories of the drivers just listening to the engine and it started sounding rough, so I figured I was out of fuel, or I knew I had done so many laps, so we were probably getting low. A little more guesswork back then. And I'm keeping it on the F1 session stats, so I feel like that's just about the info you would get on a pit board anyway. Ooh, and a car sideways up here in turn nine. Slow down a little bit just to see. Looks like some skid marks coming into the corner, and that's the one car. Not sure who that is. But maybe a hard hit into the wall. Doesn't look like they're going to go into the pits. But right there. Figured being so close to pit stops, you might as well just take a pit. But I can see one car in the pits, so either that's... Uh, it might be Sears going in for his mechanicals. I'm going to say it's either mechanical issues or they're going to start pitting. Be a little early for a pit stop, I think, but yeah, it looks like the one car here had an accident. Looks like this will be for position two. Come down a second gear. Down a first. would be finished after sliding. Well, I think that's Bobby Allison in front of me, so maybe something happened to Allison too, because I thought he was further back than that. Flat out down the straightaway though, under the champion banner. Settle the car, make you feel nice and confident. Down a third gear. Up into the top 20. Ooh, and it looks like a car up front there going into the pits, so I think it's just starting. We'll stay out. Fuel pressure is still strong. Interesting to see how this one develops. Down to first gear, work our way up the hill. Ooh, car almost every lap, I feel like I'm gonna lose it there. It'll happen eventually. Come down to turn eight. Allison's gonna squeeze me. Have to get out of it completely there. I did race him pretty hard earlier, so hopefully he's not mad. See some scratches on the side of the car though, so definitely some damage. Oh, and it looks like the front end is caved in. You can just see it in the mirror there. Right, flat out, just take it easy through the kink here behind a couple of cars. Ooh, 27 there, gonna dive down low. I think that's the car Donnie Allison would race in future seasons. Oh, gonna run all the way to the white line. You don't wanna get above that, there's no grip up there. And yeah, car's going into the pits now, so I think, I think next time by, I should pit. That'll be 15 laps, 56 lap race. We can play it like it's a 60 lapper. Give us a few options on the last stint as to when to pit. Down a second gear. Just 
behind this 97 car. Let's get a real slow car ahead. And I think that'll happen. Some of the lapped cars, especially the damaged ones, are going to be really slow. And that's Wendell Scott's car. He's not racing it today, but I know he was towards the back, whoever is driving it. We'll take advantage there. Lap car slowing up the 97. Pass both of them on the little short shoot. Alright, so I think I'll be clear for a pit stop this time. And I'm going to be the first pit stall on pit lane. Just because I started last, so I don't get a really good entry or anything. I have to be quite slow. There'll also be a pit speed limit. NASCAR 2003 doesn't work well with high speed limits on pit road. third gear. Looks like these two in front might be pitting as well. Oh, I don't want to go in too wide, so I'll sneak behind the four. Looks like a little bit of time here. Come down all the way to first gear, try not to lock the tires or anything. All right, just coming to the pits. There it is, first pit stall. Just tell the boys, fill her up, change the tires, let's go. So, all right, first stint under my belt. I've made it, so that's the first achievement, but overall, Pretty action-packed. I'm hoping, uh, hoping I can just get some good laps in in this second one. Wait for the pit crew to finish. 15.2 seconds. Much better than it would have been in the day. And we'll get away. Try not to speed. Just roll it down pit lane here. Little four car coming out directly in front of me, but that's who we pit with. So pretty decent pit stop. Should funnel back up. Said I was 14th on the way in, but there we go. Exit the pit lane. I don't see anybody in the mirror, so throttle up. Head to the S's. I'm on cold tires, so just take it nice and easy through here. All right, this is starting up stint two. I got a whole bunch of cars in front of me, though. No one too battling side by side. It's going to get increasingly more difficult to tell who's for position or not. It says the 21 car is in front of me, but I think that'll be wrong. Probably the four car here, I'd imagine. We can come up the inside here into turn eight. Ooh, he's gonna fade, try to block me a little bit. Just roll it on through. Range, maybe 
should have went a tick longer with the gears, but I don't seem to be down too much on speed. It's definitely fine when running alone. Come through, still a lot of cars in the pits there. Maybe some mechanicals across the line here. So up to 15th, all right. I was gonna say, I thought I was higher up than that at this stage. other down a bit. Taking all the curbs, straight lining some of those S's. Down to first, right on the bumper now. So come to the end, a little short shoot here. <laughs> Grabbing that gravel on the inside of the circuit. There would be, in the real race, a lot of dirt brought onto the track. Off the racing line or on the exit of corners. You'd see little ruts forming in the dirt just next to the entrance and exit of corners. It'd be really precarious as the race went on. And these two in front are going to try to pass each other through the kink. some of these corners within my limits though. I can tell the cars at this stage that I'm fighting with are fairly quick. So we've gotten through most of the slouches I would say. But up to P14, picked up one more spot there. And I still think I'm a little quicker than this group so see what I can do here. A little understeering though. Turn six is the perennial problem child. If you're not spinning you're pushing steering. Sorting it out through the end of the corner. The track is so wide. 
some spots that it's very inviting to pass other cars or go wide, but it always narrows up to get up to the S's here. The track's barely two cars wide, so going to be on high alert. Got a car closing up in the mirror there. That can't be Allison, get it? Oh, the car here, black car, very slow. Come around him. Trying to slow it down. Oh, and I think that's Gurney. Oh, and I run off the track right in front of him. But let him by. I didn't hold him up much. Oh, so Dan Gurney. 21 laps into the race, and Dan Gurney has come by. I, I gotta think he's in the lead. We'll check this time by, but... Wow. So, Dan Gurney's showing why he's the master of Riverside. Meanwhile, I'm fighting for 14th. Possibility, but 21 laps into it. But I did get held up a lot off the start. Just passing other cars, so I lost a ton of time. I don't think my pace necessarily means I should be a lap down, but I'll try to come up the inside of this 53 car. Well, as Dan gets held up there, too, in front with the 27. Come into the S's here. Off the curbs. I think this 53 is actually a lap down as well, a lot of damage on it. Down a first, then. I shouldn't have the advantage here into turn eight, but oh, he's gonna squeeze me. I'm having all kinds of problems with cars through here. Maybe gotta be a little more bold. I'm racing like I'm racing open wheel cars where you can't touch. You can lean on each other a bit in these things though. down so obviously that means I have to go one lap shorter through the whole race. Oh very fast there into turn nine. Sometimes I think the tires won't grip but they do. Working the wheel a bit, car getting upset through the corner. Come across the line here. Seven car. I think that's the car right in front of me. So, about halfway through this stint, I think I want to try to go to lap 30. Unless there's another reason to pit. Down a first, just hug that curb. Still going to run a bit wide. First, when I can see Elmo Langley in front of the uh, 27 here. Elmo was a long time pace car driver for NASCAR throughout the 80s and 90s. Here in his prime, though, racing at Riverside. Come by the 27, set our sights on Elmo. I think he'll be for a position because I don't think I've seen him yet. through the kinks getting, dare I say, processional. Oh, I'll break in the car behind though, through turn nine. Set our sights here on Elmo in front. near my 
top 10 goal, which is exciting, although I'm a lap down, which is a little discouraging. Dan is absolutely on a tear. I'm just kind of keeping my eyes on the mirror for maybe Pearson to come through. A little bit closing up nicely on Elmo. He's getting stuck behind this yellow car, looks like. Well, oh, maybe get around the outside of him. Kind of a weird passing place. Try it on the other side, though. Down a first gear, then. Another, but I guess that happens when you put 43 cars on a road course. There's always somebody to be battling. So we'll go down to first gear for turn eight. Well, oh, sliding a little bit wide. Didn't quite get the apex that time. and at the same time it feels like it's been a long race already. And this 89 car is going to hold me up a little bit through the last corner. Down to 
second gear, just let it roll on through. Got a good little pack up here. See Mario Andretti, Ned Jarrett, I think JD McDuffie up there. Alright, see if I can get up the inside of the 89 coming into turn 8. Break a little later than usual, but got the position there. Slide in behind Ned. Oh, he's looking, trying to get around Andretti. It's going to run me right to the edge of the circuit. Come on. Maybe you didn't see me there. But pass on the dirt. Luckily not spinning the car out. It's easy to get on the throttle and because you don't have a lot of grip. You can spin the car. We'll come through the kink though next to Andretti. So putting a lap on Mario Andretti. Not everybody can say they've done that. to the line. I think this is going to be the halfway lap. So hopefully the second half of the race can be as good as this first half has gone for me. Really only negative is that I think I've gone a lap down to uh, Dan Gurney at this stage. But he did pit I think so who knows. Well, not, we won't really know exactly what happened until the final results. Just how racing should be. up to P5 somehow, so I haven't actually looked at that in a couple of laps. Maybe some cars have been pitting, I don't know. I didn't think any of those cars I just passed were for position. We'll break it down here a little late on the downshifts. Behind JD. So unless, I mean, I don't know if Gurney went into the pits with some kind of mechanical. I suppose I could ask the crew on the next stop. Stuck in behind Wendell Scott's car, though. Let's see if I can let him to the outside, and I'll have just enough room to cut up the inside. So I think just a couple more laps till I'll pit. Maybe some of the cars pitting a little earlier. You could split the end of the race a bit more evenly. Just got 28 laps to go, and it'll just be two more stops for me, so. good when you get it right, still not, not nailing it perfectly. Keep it in third gear for most of the start of the lap. When you're alone, you can... top of the rev range there. Down to first gear. It's one of the places I check the mirror. And I always liked how that's turn six. Whoa. And over the crest here, this is turn eight. And it's because we cut off that inner loop of the circuit. And from what I can tell, they always called this turn eight, even if you were taking the shorter circuit here. So just no turn seven <laughs> on the circuit today. But what is a corner? I don't think the kink counted as a corner either. It's a car dancing there on the throttle. So, fuel pressure is all the way up, but I know it's been about 15 laps since my last stop. I think I'll try to go one more. Come through the kink here. Try to go one more lap before the pits. something to the car. Drivers just wouldn't see it. Alright, but we'll come. I know I got a 
pit though. So come through turn eight here. It says I have a 22 car in front by by 26 seconds, which is a long way. Catching up Bobby Isaac and a couple other cars here. Bobby Allison again. Come down to second gear though and just ease it on into the pits. Oh, I'm gonna lose a little time this time too, but it'll keep me from spinning out or anything. So we'll come down to the pit stall. Got it in neutral. That's the pit guys. Who's in the lead? Dan Gurney's in the lead. 26 seconds. So I'm in fifth place legitimately, but maybe some pit stops going on. I won't really know. I can see one car get past me there. The crew would tell me though who's in the lead. All right, 14.9 seconds, even better this time. Wood Brothers were always good pit crews. So second stint under the belt, 26 laps to go. So this one will be a little odd because it's kind of a weird number of laps. So I can kind of pit. Whenever I see 15 to go, I can choose when to pit. Whoa, speeding a little bit there. Come out of the pit lane. All right. Luckily not getting a black flag, that would have been the most terrible thing at this stage. All right, so into the S's, got no car behind me, but got a whole group in front, a couple of slow cars too, Tiny Lund again, always hitting the dirt. Oh my God, he's so slow. I don't want to do anything too wild that could take me out of it. Maybe on the last lap if you're fighting for the lead or something, but. Not with 25 laps to go at Riverside. All right, come over the hump towards turn eight. You can see a couple damaged cars. I think that's Curtis Turner. So he's still in the race after that big crash earlier, which is good to see. This is back in the days where you could repair the car in the pits and come back out 40 laps down or something. seventh after the pit stop, which is not bad. Much further up than I thought I was. I don't know where I gained a few positions there. I'll have to look back at it after the race, but somebody dropped out or something. So went from 10th to 5th, no issue. Oh, and I see Marvin Panch up there, so he's still in the race. Which is good. It says he's behind me, actually. Maybe that was after the last lap, so I might be going chasing for position here. My teammate and the car that I'm driving the backup for. Just coming to the S's here. Curtis Turner's actually pretty quick, even though his car is that damaged. So we'll sit behind him through the S's. Down a second gear then. Closing up on him very tightly. Whole trunk of the car is open now. That won't be good for your top speed. Make our way past one of our teammates not having a good day. Coming up to our other teammate who's having a better day than I thought they were. Thank <laughs> you. 
back of Panch now. Should both have to make at least one more pit stop. I don't know where he would be in the pit cycle. Nine car, slow car here. I think that gold car is also for position. Oh, bad, bad turn eight there, but a lot going on in the front in front of me, but Panch having to come out wide. I'm getting a great slipstream on these two. Oh, should I make this kind of move on my teammate? Maybe he'll talk to Gurney after the race. Axel sent to the inside, past Panch. Oh, right to the top of the rev range. We'll come down to turn nine, down to third gear. So making the pass for P7. I got P6 directly in front of me. now. I have to see if I pick up any more positions from pitting. Not just P7 that time. Down a third gear. like Gurney just from what I saw talking to my crew there that Gurney's got this one pretty much in hand if his car sticks with him at over 20 second lead on Pearson. Going up the inside of the 29 though. It's been one of my favorite passing spots it seems like. Just keep it nice and tidy through turn eight here. off the racing line, oh, the 18 car just spinning, just going by, 
Oh, so quite a lazy spin. So easy to do, honestly. I'm surprised. It's taken me 36 laps to do that. We'll just gather back up like it never happened. Hopefully none of the uh, <laughs> none of the cameras caught that one. But a little lazy half spin. Just to go to the corner slightly too fast. The car just gets all kinds of sideways. Tires don't have any lateral grip. And so you're gone. And if you imagine the types of tires that were on Grand Prix cars at this time, and those are so slidey, but this car weighs easily double what those cars weigh. So it's very easy to slide the car through the corner then. Alright, so not the best lap, but we'll just continue on. I didn't really lose much. I'm actually up to P5 now. I feel like I'm getting rewarded for doing a bad job there. Now we're 32 seconds off the 22 car. Two seconds is quite a lot. But P5, top five would be absolutely beautiful. So come up to the 18. He must have been coming out of the pits because he's much quicker now. Just take it easy this time into turn eight. You can see my skid marks there. I was just I was wide coming into the corner and going too fast. but 
the pit stop itself is, you know, 15 to 20 seconds, but the pit lane equally takes that long. So you're gonna lose about 30 seconds in the pits. Coming up on Tiny Lund again, so what is it, the third or fourth time I've seen him in this race. It's ahead, it's gonna fade in in front of us. That's that four car that shoved me off the track earlier. Just gonna close in on these two here, but nowhere really to go. Oh, Tiny's gonna take a weird line there, maybe let me by. Kind of a weird spot, I'll take it. Out of second gear, but a really fast car behind us, closing up. Try not to run too wide. Gonna be Dan again, could it? Oh, car blows up right in front of me. Oil would go everywhere. Just take a wide line here, cut it nice and close. Yeah, and a car right on my bumper. I'm not sure who that is. I'm trying to get the throttle down though. I can see a whole mess of cars in front, so that might be my sign to pit. Got a car trying to come up behind me. I've got a whole the cars in front of me. I'm not gonna pit yet. Stay out for at least another lap. And that car right on my bumper through turn nine. Not sure who that is. They're gonna look to the outside. I'll let them have the outside. Oh, right against me. And that's James Hilton there. Oh, and he runs wide. Oh, James came from a few seconds back though to come around me. See if I can stick with him. Obviously, he's got something good going. I think I'll have to pit again as well though, just based on him being out. Wow, so James is quite quick. I don't know how I passed him to begin with, but maybe he had some troubles and he was racing up front. I think a lot of people wrongly think of some of these drivers in their later years when maybe we got to know them, but James won a few races. Back in the 60s and 70s here. Come through turn eight though. Obviously, would want to flag the boys or something. They're always ready, the Wood Brothers, but we'll come to the pit stall. Stop right at the sign. All right, made the stop. Change tires and fuel. So, we've made it to the last stint of the race. It was a short third stint. Had a lazy spin there. Another reason to, to pit would be those tires. 14.9 seconds. So, a good job in the pits today by the crew. Well, I can see. Richard Petty flying by there. So we won't have to worry, or won't care too much about where I come out position-wise. It says I'm P6 still. It's all gonna work itself out, as long as there's no yellow flag. Putting myself at a little bit of a risk here, but try what I can. All right, come out of the pits. catching. Come down to second gear. I think it's Ned Jarrett as well in front of me. Come through turn six, holding it all together here. Brand new tires. Actually quite grippy right out of the pits. It's, it's after a series of laps that they get really slick. Come down to first then. 
roll it on through. Sometimes it feels so slow. I'm very interested to see how this looks on video. Because to me, it's been quite intense driving, but I don't know if that's because I'm having to really massage the pedals and the wheel. I don't know if it'll come through on video. there. Run a little wide though. See if I can swipe up the inside of him. Hopefully the last time I have to pass him today. Why this really bent up 53 car. Might be time to park it honestly. No, no 
clue what happened there. Come through turn nine, couple cars low on the circuit. Looks like Richard Petty going in for the pits. So this is where we'll have to see if Hilton pits or not. The one I had the 22 in front of me last time, so maybe Hilton got around him. 49 seconds. No clue what's going on with the positions. Come over the line. Oh, and there's Dan Gurney pulling out of the pits. So Kearney's going to be right behind me. So I got my lap back, but just... Oh, I'm missing the downshift of third there. Got it just in time. Catch the car. Engine braking is definitely a thing with the stock car, just because of how heavy it is. The brakes probably aren't that bad, but to stop you know, a 3,500-pound car or whatever it is, they're not the best. So I got my lap back on Dan for just a second, but I can see him already in the mirror. So I'll keep an eye on that. Don't want to hold up my uh, my teammate. Down a first gear. Across 
the line then complete another lap. Luckily no cars coming out of the pits this time. Oh, and Hilton pulls into seven seconds behind. Seven seconds and seven to go. That was two seconds on that lap though. Or over one second. I'm not gonna do the extra digit math right now. Down a second here. Oh, very fast there entering turn six that time. Gathered it up though. Catching quite a pack of cars, which is not what I wanted. Hopefully a few lap cars between me and Hilton though. Catching this 10 car. Oh, Bobby Isaac running off the circuit in front. Making a mistake there. Uncharacteristic, I think. See what I can do though. Let's get that inside line, so I'll have to come around the outside of him, I think. Through the kick side by side. Always oh, uncomfortable. seconds so we're not trading anymore <laughs> he's definitely gaining on me and I let Gurney by which definitely didn't help I get on through here turn eight seconds, so that's good. 
It's going to be hard to make up seven seconds in four laps. Not impossible, but hard. Though I'm getting stuck here behind Jared, so that's not going to help my cause. Also need to keep my mirrors in my eyes for David Pearson as well. No doubt we'll be chasing down Dan. Maybe help out Dan a little bit. Position. It sees two in front. Oh my god. 
side by side, that tiny Lund again. Come through turn six. Oh, turn eight getting squeezed out by the 16 car. No matter, better to survive here. Come through onto the straightaway for the final time. both of these guys. I can see Dan in front of me taking some cars, <laughs> passing him as ever, coming into the final corners. We'll come through as well. Break at the three marker, down to third gear, and just nicely roll on through. So finishing the race here at Riverside, all the way up, I think, to fourth position. It's a pretty wild one, such a difficult race. I don't know if it would look like it from watching, but very excited to finish that one across the line. But it is a P4 after starting 43rd, and I think Dan Gurney has won it. But what, what endurance races is the 16 car is gonna fly by here? What endurance races these NASCAR races were, especially on the road course. 500 miles on an oval is a long race, but I can't imagine doing two two more of these in a row, so quite the race indeed. Okay, and looking at the final race results, Dan Gurney able to repeat his real life performance and get the win from David Pearson and Jim Herdebees hanging in there in the 56 car on the lead lap. Uh, but Dan Gurney was able to lap everybody but the top three, so showing why he was the dominant guy he was and always got a ride for Riverside. Uh, but P4, Richie Axelson coming away with it. So starting 43rd, getting up to P4, that should hopefully impress uh, Dan Gurney a little bit. And uh, happy for myself too, just keeping it clean most of the race. I only had one real uh, accident or mistake and, and got away with it luckily, but mostly clean. And so good pit stops, good strategy and just passing cars, a lot of fun racing at Riverside. I hope that comes through especially, but holding it off there at the end from James Hilton, who was who was catching me for a few laps. It was, it was dicey there. I didn't know if he would uh, actually come up and pass me like he did the stint before. Uh, but Marvin Panch finishing in P6. And if we look down, let's see if there's anything interesting that happened, but Hutchinson retired here right at the end. So that might have been one of the cars that went off along with Richard Petty, P21 with an accident. So might have to take a look at what happened there. Bobby Allison, even though I passed him a few times, able to finish P19, four laps down. A lot of laps down with these cars. We'll scroll further down, anything of note. Quite a few retirements though. Looks like AJ Foyt retiring. I guess I didn't talk about him at all. He wasn't in the race really, but AJ Foyt finishing dead last with an ignition issue. So, Riverside, the Motor Trend 500. I hope that was enjoyable. I hope, uh, hope doing a different type of race was fun. I wanna do more of this. I wanna really explore the 1966 season in racing and maybe expand a little bit from just the F1 and Grand Prix centric, but should be flying back to New Zealand after this one, I think. Gotta go on to Tonga. So until next time, thank you for watching.